Workers have not returned to the labor force in America as fast as your administration thought they would. Why do you think that is? Why aren't Because they're able to negotiate for higher wages and they like move from one job to another. That's one of the reasons why. A lot of people don't want to continue to do the job they did before, making seven, eight, nine bucks an hour. An awful lot of, of the auto, excuse me, of the truck drivers are not unionized truck drivers. They're working like hell and not getting paid a whole lot. And so what you're seeing here is a combination of the desire of people to be able to change professions, to be able to do more and, and take care of their families, and at the same time dealing with an issue that, in fact, we are short of workers. But worker pay has actually gone up. Yeah, it's all fine. It's, it's all going very well. Joining me now to talk about that is Peter Navarro. He was the director of Office of Trade and Manufacturing Policy under President Trump. Also, also the author of the book, In Trump Time, A Journal of America's Plague Year. Peter, <laughs> I, haven't you heard? Wages are going up. Everything's fine. Oh, man, I just want to bang my head against <laughs> the wall when I hear that idiot talk. I mean, it does like elections have consequences. And uh, look, um, my remit at the White House for the president for the first three years before, by the way, this is the, the Wuhan bioweapons lab where Tony Fauci and the communists cooked up the pandemic, but we'll get to that. Uh, you know, my first three years at the White House was was basically buy American, hire American. And President Trump had a vision and it was like bring American factories home. So when you bring them home, the supply chains come with them. So you have resilient supply chains, but flip that around. If you send out our factories offshore and the supply chains go offshore, what do you got? You got today, right? You got you got a supply chain chaos there and fragile supply chains. But what Biden doesn't understand is that universal vaccination policy, whether you support it or not from a healthcare point of view, we can get to that too. Um, economically, it's like keeping truck drivers home. It's keeping pilots home. It's keeping food processors home. Longshoremen. I, I'm an economist by training. I've never seen a worse situation macroeconomically. I've never seen worse labor market uh, distortions and shortages as I see now. And we got President Clueless there um, spinning his yarns and pitching his union, uh, union spin there. I mean, it's just like, hey, uh, this is trouble in River City. The In Trump Time book is about that trouble. It started here, and we can thank Fauci for that. Actually, I want to get to that right now. You just brought up some of, if not most of, the economic problems we have right now. Supply chains, we have inflation problems, and those inflation problems are, are showing no indication they're going to get any better. It looks really, really bad. It looks like we're on the cusp of something, and I don't think we should forget this is all because of coronavirus. Tell me yes. why you're standing in front of the Wuhan lab. And remember what our problem is. It's not just inflation. It's, it's stagflation, which is to say recession plus inflation. It's like the 70s, and we're reliving that or about to. Okay, here's the, this is the house that Tony Fauci built. And let me talk about and in the context of the In Trump Time book and the first time I saw Tony Fauci, it was in the Situation Room on January 28, 2020. Uh, my antenna were on high alert because 16 years earlier, I'd written a book that said that the commies were going to create a viral pandemic and kill millions. I wrote that in a book called The Coming China War. So I go in that sit room. The president had sent me there to make sure the task force would support his decision to pull down flights from communist China, right? So I get in there and, and there's like Mulvaney down at the end as the acting chief of staff. You got, I love Pompeo, Secretary of State, but I had one of his hacks beside me, a real loser guy, Orville Redenbacher doppelganger, that was Redfield at CDC, a real bumbling bureaucrat, and Azar, the Secretary of Health and Human Service. I knew I was gonna have trouble with all of them. What I, what, what I didn't know was this guy sitting across me, little round glasses on, and within a minute, I'm in a shouting match with this guy. And all he keeps saying is travel bans don't work. Travel bans don't work. And I go, dude. And I said to him, dude, it's like, you mean if we have 20,000 Chinese nationals come in every day, many of them from Wuhan, hot like a Christmas tree with virus that we're better off, you know, come on down. He just kept saying travel bans don't work. I knew that guy thought he was smarter than he was. I also knew he was going to hurt the president. But here's where we get to this. Okay, the big lie 
was not the lie Fauci told to Rand Paul in Congress about gain of function experiments going on here. The big lie was at the end of January, the dawn of pandemic, and it was a lie of omission. I will, in the in Trump time book, I will say with certainty that Fauci knew at that time, early in the pandemic, that this bioweapons lab, okay, was the source of the virus. He received an email from a prominent Scripps research scientist that said flat out, this thing's likely genetically engineered, fact one. Fact two, the virus he knew came from within yards of this building. Fact three, Fauci behind the back of President Trump and me and others in the administration in 2017 lifted the ban on gain of function experiments, which are used to turn harmless bat viruses into human killers. And so you put all that together at a minimum what Fauci should have done right then, right then at the dawn of pandemic, gone to the president, gone to the task force and said, hey, uh, I think this might have come from this lab, right? We would have had a totally different strategy. We could have saved hundreds of thousands of American lives, cracked down on the Chinese, made them come clean. But what did Fauci do? He not only lied by omission, he designed one of the most elaborate cover-ups you've ever seen. He had Peter Daszak, his cutout, launch a campaign to convince you, me, and everybody else in America that this thing was from nature, not from this. This is ground zero, and this is the house that Tony Fauci built. Is it possible that he was just trying to cover his own rear end? Because that sounds like Bond movie villain stuff, what you just described, Peter. Fauci, look, um, I'm a self-described empath. I talk about it in the In Trump Time book. When I first met Fauci, I didn't know he was a god. I didn't know he was a saint. I just I just took a measure of the man, and I thought, I thought to myself, this guy thinks he's smarter than he is. But I also, he comes off both as a narcissist and a sociopath over the course of the In Trump Time book. It's, it's always a lie to cover a lie to cover a lie. You know, the initial thing was, oh, uh, the virus came from nature. Okay, oh, now it's like, oh, maybe it came from the lab. Oh, um, wasn't from gain of function. Oh, it might have been gain of function, but it was somebody else, not me. It, so um, I think, you know, he's like 80 years old. I think he wants to uh, make people think um, he's, you know, a saint. Um, and he became effectively a very useful idiot for people like CNN's Jeff Zucker, who I call out really harshly in the In Trump Time book, blood on Zucker's hands, to be clear. Um, and the whole strategy was blame the president, not China, for the pandemic and use Fauci kind of as the instrument to bludgeon the president. So every time Every time Fauci would criticize the president, either aggressively or passively, he would go up in the ratings because the left-wing media would push him up, and that would drive the president down. But I, in the In Trump Time book, I, I, I have numerous confrontations with him. Um, I was the only guy in the administration who took him on publicly and privately. I urged the president to fire him twice. I almost got fired myself for taking Fauci on, but I was absolutely right every time I challenged him, and he needs to be gone. He needs to be fired. He needs to be in an orange jumpsuit at the end of the day, because this is the house that Fauci built. This is the Wuhan bioweapons lab where the pandemic has come from, and it's killed millions of people worldwide and cost trillions of dollars. Peter, why didn't Trump fire him? I, I, I've, I've wrapped my mind around this. I've, yeah. I've tried to wrap my mind around this yeah. a million times. The guy's famous for you're fired, and he kept that loser on throughout. Why? Yeah, I, well, there, there's three reasons. First of all, you know, I don't blame him for not firing Fauci. Um, who, he, who was I, right? I, I was, that was the, the trade and economics guy. Never mind that it his history would prove me to be a better scientist than Tony Fauci on all of this. So, okay, so uh, I'm the lone voice in the White House saying, fire that SOB. And meanwhile, you had all of the healthcare people, uh, Azar, Redfield, Stephen Hahn at the FDA, Collins at the NIA saying, no, you need to keep Fauci. But here's the, here's the people that, that I do blame at the White House. Uh, Mulvaney is the chief of staff. Uh, was derelict in his duty and the press 
people who were running the press shop, they were deathly afraid. They quaked in their boots that somehow if you fired Fauci, there would be blowback and they couldn't manage the news cycle. And my view is like Lance that boil. It's like Churchill on, on Hitler. It's like strangle that baby in the crib. And, it, you know, if we had simply done that, and 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 made Fauci just stay over in his bureaucracy and off television, it, it would have been a totally different story. And here's the thing: I mean, the importance about the in Trump time book is that it's history. It explains historically how even as Fauci was was lording over us, being saying Fauci, he covered this up. He knew. He knew that he was likely the cause of the pandemic. And to this day, he's out there telling six-year-olds they need to get jabbed by a vaccine that shouldn't be let within three miles of any children. Peter Navarro, the book is In Trump Time, a journal of America's plague year. Peter, thank you so much. That was outstanding. Great to be with you, sir. Be good. All right. It's time to lighten the mood next. Yesterday was Halloween. Oh, I dressed up. You'll see. Joe Biden went abroad and, well, it went exactly like you thought. That's coming up tonight on I'm Right. Welcome to I'm Right. It's time for another version of Dome and Dumber. What am I doing here? interpersonal interactions. One person talking to another person, sitting down, maybe having a beer, maybe meeting out somewhere, maybe playing around a golf, maybe it's in a conference room, but interpersonal relationships run the world. And that sucks, doesn't it? Have you ever thought about that? How bad that sucks? Because in our minds, this is what happens in our minds. Even when there are people in charge we disagree with, like like Joe Biden, right, the Biden administration, even when there are people like that in charge, we like to think there's somehow some machine or something somewhere that keeps things in relative order. It gives us peace. It gives us peace. No, oh, no, there's not. That's nothing to do with weakness here or stupidity there. They just look. Everything's going along fine. So I'm sure there's some. There's a, there are systems in place. Right? There are rules. There are there are little guardrails. They're going to keep everybody between the ditches. But none of that's true. When you actually read history, when you actually study it, documentaries, read books about it, it is amazing. I've always found it to be so amazing how many gigantic world-changing events take place because of person-to-person -person interaction. Why am I talking about this? What am I talking about? Right now, I'll play a little clip. Well, I'll play several clips in a minute. Right now, Joe Biden, President of the United States of America, is abroad. And I realize People already are aware that he's not exactly the most with it president, putting it kindly. He's not exactly the most with it president we've ever had. But as we speak, as you're sitting there looking at me on the television, Joe Biden, president of the United States of America, is being assessed. He is being assessed in person by other world leaders. And you'll never know it. I'll never know it. But right about now... They're figuring things out. What can they get away with? What can't they get away with? Should they be scared of America? Welcoming of America? Should they mock America? When I say Joe Biden went overseas and embarrassed us, he did, and we're going to laugh about that, but also understand world-changing events take place because of person-to-person -person meetings. This guy met with this guy, met with this guy, and sized him up. Thought he might just go ahead and try something. This is the president of the United States of America in a climate change summit today. Remember. 
Remember when he fell asleep when he met with Israel's PM? He is a walking disaster. An absolute walking disaster. And to have the commander-in-chief not just be misguided on policy, but to be so physically and mentally unable to perform the job is a national security issue. It is. It is a national security issue that Joe Biden is not with it enough to do the job of President of the United States of America. It's a big deal. And of course, he spoke today about his climate change nuttery. And before I go to that, let me just let me just say something quickly here. Man-made climate change is not real. It's a complete myth. It is a myth that is backed by all kinds of crap science, oftentimes science that is funded by the governments who are gaining power by pushing climate change stuff. It's not real at all. And how wild is this? Think about this. All the leaders of the West are over there right now. Trudeau and the princes and everything, Biden, they're all over there right now figuring out ways to tackle man-made climate change. We have all kinds of real issues facing the West right now, supply chains and inflation and housing. There's all kinds of these huge issues and all the leaders of the West are currently gathered to figure out how to tackle the one that's completely made up. Isn't that the most apropos thing you've ever heard? What a clown world we live in now. Here's Joe Biden, he's gonna tackle climate change. High energy prices only, only reinforce the urgent need to diversify, diversify sources, double down on clean energy development, and adapt promising new clean energy technologies so we can not only oh, oh, we don't remain overly reliant on one source of power to power our economies and our communities. That's the President of the United States of America in front of the world. Gosh, that sucks. And, and it's not like the world can't see. I actually saw a broadcast over the weekend. They were making fun of him in Australia. In Australia, the news reporters on camera are making fun of the president. Jeez, it's so embarrassing. And, and, and look, you think the world can't see Joe Biden having press conferences and reading his note cards for, for who he's supposed to call on? Uh, this one says, uh, uh, Julie, J look at this embarrassment. And now I'm happy to take some questions, and I'm told I should start with AP Zeke Miller. Zeke, you have a question. <laughs> Didn't recognize you the mask on. Mask on. I apologize. He's so not with it, he can't even cover it up. <laughs> and I'm told, I love that. And I'm told, uh, uh, Zeke, Zeke Miller. <laughs> Jeez. This is a big deal. It's more than just funny fodder for TV, okay? It is a big deal that the President of the United States of America is not a functional adult. It's a really big deal. This man is making gigantic changes to the United States of America, not just foreign policy either. Remember, this, this vaccine mandate insanity is still going on across the country. That's Joe Biden. The person guiding the United States of America is not a functional adult. And, and on top of everything else, he doesn't love the country. He, just like every other Democrat does, had to go over there and apologize for us. And I, I guess I shouldn't apologize, but I do apologize for the fact the United States uh, in the last administration pulled out of the Paris Accords and put us sort of behind the eight ball a little bit. Don't apologize for me, Joe Biden. Don't apologize for me, especially not to Europeans. I'll tell you that much. And you know how we always talk about the three things these people have in common? You know what those three things are? You're probably rolling your eyes. You've heard me say it a million times. No love of country. No connection to reality. They don't exist in the real world, really. They live in this bubble. And they believe with all their heart they should rule over you. Maybe the best example of that is this. They're all in Europe to tackle climate change, right? It's, it's a big deal. Man-made climate change. These emissions... Do you have any idea how many private jets flew in to Europe to tackle climate change? Joe Biden himself took an 85-car motorcade when he was in Rome. 
85 cars. And so what happens is people, they see that and they get mad and they say what? They say hypocrisy. That's hypocrisy. It's not hypocrisy, not really. Remember the three things we just talked about? What was number three? The belief they should rule over you. You need to understand this applies to Joe Biden, Trudeau, all these Western leaders today. They do believe they should rule over you. They do not believe they are elected leaders just here to serve. They believe in the old way of thinking, the monarchy way of thinking, that you, you're lesser. You're of a lower class. You're a peasant. You're one of the plebs. You should be ruled over. They actually feel, they feel good about that. That makes them feel like they're doing a good thing. It's not a snobbishness. It's uh, you, I mean, you couldn't possibly fend for yourself. We can't let these peasants just run around and be free. They'll, they'll screw it all up. We, we should rule over you. So these people don't see the hypocrisy, if that's what you want to call it, and flying a bunch of private jets and taking cars over there. They're in this to crush you and gather power unto themselves. They believe they should have all the power and be able to sit on their thrones and, and preside over the people. They do think that way. And until you understand that's how these people think, you'll never be able to take them on, ever. They think that way. You could yell hypocrisy at them all day long. It won't make a dent. They don't view it as hypocrisy. They're part of the ruling class. You're not part of that class. So it's not hypocrisy. You're just not welcome in the same club they are. And you do, you have to admire the chutzpah of Joe Biden getting into office, stopping the Keystone Pipeline, stopping all drilling on federal lands. And remember, when Joe Biden took office, not only were gas prices cheap, America was energy independent. Joe Biden gets in, promptly stops all of that and gets up there today and blames Saudi Arabia. But I do think that the idea that Russia and Saudi Arabia and other major producers are not going to pump more oil so people can have gasoline to get to and from work, for example, is, uh, is, 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 not, is not right. He couldn't even get through that. Now, that was a bunch of bad news. I do have some good news, though. Joe Biden's poll numbers? Man. Get, this is from NBC News. Which party would do a better job? Republicans were up 27 on the border, 24 on inflation, 22 on crime, 21 on national security, 18 on the economy, and 13 on getting things done. So, yes, they are destroying their own party, and they're probably going to take a beating in the midterms, maybe in 2024, too. But I do want you, I want you to understand this. I want to caution you on something. Not that I'm trying to burst anybody's bubble here. The communist thrives on destruction. The more he can destroy, the better that will be for him long term. Because happy people never choose communism. They would never. So the communist has always known, I have to create misery first. Even if this costs them the House of Representatives and the presidency in 2024, they're doing lasting damage right now. And speaking of 2024, or who are we kidding? It'll be sooner. Remember, Kamala Harris, she's the vice president of the United States of America. I want you to watch this cringing video of Dome and just remember, this woman is going to be your president soon. I tell everybody you know to vote tomorrow. Nothing like saying, you want to meet me tomorrow? What you, what you doing tomorrow? You got any plans tomorrow? Tomorrow's a good day. It's going to be a good day. What, what was the accent? Where did that... <laughs> she, she can't do it. All that may have made you uncomfortable, but I'm right. Now, we have Congressman Jim Jordan on the show tonight. He's been savaging these people, and I'm glad he is. So we're going to talk to him about that. But first, are you in debt? Total Financial Freedom is here to help if you're in debt. If you owe $10,000 or more, do not give up. 
Don't wallow in your shame and embarrassment. Man, life happens. Life's hard sometimes. But they will help you get out of it. In some cases, they're cutting people's payments in half. In half. Give them a call. 877-332-8291. 877-332-8291. Set aside all that wallow in your sorrow garbage. I'm never going to get out of it. Yes, you can. Total Financial Freedom has an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau for a reason. They're helping people just like you. Call them today. We'll be back. Mr. President, is it true that we're going to give $450,000 to border crossers who are separated? Does your plan be for Iran include a military option, Mr. President? Well, I don't know if you heard, that was the rumor going around last week. I believe it was Wall Street Journal who broke that. Yes, there's a rumor they're going to give $450,000 to illegal immigrants. Joining me now to talk about that and many other things is the ranking member of the House Judiciary Committee and author of a new book I would recommend, Do What You Said You Would Do, Fighting for Freedom in the Swamp. Congressman Jim Jordan joins us today. Congressman, I would say that sounds so outlandish. There's no chance it could possibly be true, but that would probably be naive with how crazy these people are. Well, no, I mean, yeah, half a million dollars for breaking the law, such a deal for uh, for American taxpayers. You know, the Democrats are looking to put, they're looking to put um, amnesty in this big spending package for eight to 10 million people who, you know, illegal immigrants who, who broke the law. And that's, that's, you know, crazy enough. But now it's like, oh, you can, you can get not only amnesty, but we're going to pay you half a million bucks. Meanwhile, uh, you know, meanwhile, Americans, if you, uh, if you don't get this vaccine, you might lose your job. Um, and you got, uh, what, what what's now $3 and 50 cent gas and a host of other things that American citizens have to deal with. So this is, this is crazy. But frankly, at this point, uh, in, in the 10 months of this Biden administration, what, what haven't they done that hasn't been crazy? Well, one more question on the illegal immigration thing, because I get questions about this all the time. I'm sure you do, too. As you know, we have another huge migrant caravan coming our way. Yeah. This is clearly something that's not going to stop or slow down, because it didn't even stop in the summer months when it normally does because of the heat. Are, are we really stuck with four years of this? How many of the, What is that going to be, four or five million people by the time these people are done in the White House? I, unfortunately, I, I think that's the that's certainly the trajectory we're on. I mean, as you point out, every single month has basically been worse than the last, which tells you this is deliberate, this is intentional. And of course, the message they send is we're not going to build the wall, we're not going to keep the Remain in Mexico policy, uh, and now we're going to pay people who break the law. Um, if that is an incentive for people to come, I don't know what is. And then, of course, all the tragedies that happen, all the tough things that happen, particularly to to kids and, and, and ladies along this, this trek. Um, but they, the left doesn't want to talk about that. But yeah, this seems deliberate. This seems intentional to me. But, um, you know, we can, I think we can slow it down some when we take back the House a year from tomorrow. Um, but, you know, until we get a new president, until President Trump runs again and wins, it's going to be tough to stop this nonsense that, uh, that we see from Joe Biden. Your book, Do What You Said You Would Do, Fighting for Freedom in the Swamp. You talk, obviously talk about the swamp. How did it get so bad there? Because what it, what it seems like more than anything, on top of being broken, it just seems like they're so disconnected there from normal people. How did that happen when they were elected by normal people? Yeah, it's, I think part of it is people get here and it's just easier to kind of go along and not, not fight back and not actually do what you told the voters you were going to do when you ran for the job and frankly why they elected you. I, I always say we make this job way too complicated. What'd you tell the voters you're gonna do when you put your name on the ballot? If they elect you, just go do what you said. Uh, but that doesn't seem to happen here. And now it's gotten so bad where the left, um, I always point out one of my one of my friends is uh, former Congressman Dennis Kucinich and he's an old school liberal where you could actually have a debate where he actually believed in the First Amendment. You know, he gets his best shot, takes his best ideas, and we have a debate, and I'll do ours, and he's on the left, I'm on the right, and we're gonna have we're gonna see what happens. That's the way it's supposed to work in this country. But the new left, the new hard left, they don't want to debate. They don't believe in the First Amendment. They just say either do it my way or you're a racist, you're no good, I'm gonna attack you, I'm gonna attack your family, we're gonna cancel you. That is the part of the big problem here too. And so it's just a it's just a crazy environment. But what we need, I think, is Republicans who are willing to come here and, like I said, fight for what they told the voters they were gonna do. 
And we talk about a lot of that in our uh, in our book, some of the big investigations and some of the behind the scenes stuff that I think your your viewers will like um, uh, when they when they get a chance to read it. You brought up Kucinich, but I, I, you're so right about that. I try to explain to people now, this is not even Bill Clinton's parties. And it's, and it's not like I'm a big fan of Bill Clinton, but he would he's far, far to the right of this madness yep. today. These people seem like they only want to wreck the place. And I don't want to be, I mean, I, I am partisan, but I don't want to be too over the top. How am I supposed to take these things as anything other than they're trying to trash the place? No, I think that's exactly what they're trying to do because that's what we see happening. I mean, think about it. in 10 months, I had a, I had a friend send me a text the other day. He says, I wake up every morning thinking it can't get worse. By the end of the day, Democrats prove me wrong <clears throat> because it just keeps getting worse. Every, we went from a secure border to chaos. It went from energy independence to the, to the spectacle of the president of the United States begging OPEC to increase production. We went from relatively safe streets to the rising crime in every major urban area because Democrats defund the police. Um, we went from being respected around the world to what we saw with the debacle that was the Afghanistan withdrawal, and, and on and on we could go. So yeah, they, they seem to just, and, and I haven't even got to the most important thing, what we were just talking about, what they've done to, our, to the First Amendment. Every, Jesse, every single liberty we enjoy under the First Amendment has been assaulted over the last year by the left. Your right to practice your faith, right to assemble, right to petition your government, freedom of the press, freedom of speech, every single thing. I was given a speech a few months ago in to the New Mexico Republican Party in Amarillo, Texas, because they had to go to Texas to get their First Amendment right to assemble because their crazy left-wing governor wouldn't let them meet in their own darn state. So that's how crazy this has become. Um, let's hope it ends soon. Let's hope it ends soon. Let's Let's hope it ends soon. You, uh, <laughs> I have to tell you, we played it last week on the show. I did enjoy you tearing Merrick Garland a new one. For anyone who missed last week's show, please please observe the congressman here last week. First sentence of your memo, very first, first sentence, you said, in recent months there's been a disturbing spike in harassment, intimidation, threats of violence. Yes. When did you first review the data showing this so-called disturbing uptick? So I read the letter, and we have been seeing over time Threats. Whoa, 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 whoa. I didn't ask you. So you read the letter. That's that's your source. So let me be clear. We, this is not a prosecution or an is there some study, some effort, some investigation. Someone did that said there's been a disturbing uptick or you just take the words of the National School Board Association. When the National School Board Association, which represents thousands of school boards and school board members, says that there are these kind of threats. When we read in the newspapers reports of threats of violence, when that is in the context of threats of violence, the source for this, the, for the very first line in your in your mouth, time of the gentleman has expired. Was the school the board time association of the gentleman has letter expired, Mr. Deutsch? Congressman, I, yeah. I'm not naive. I know people who disagree with me are going to be in charge a lot, but is it too much to ask to have them at least be informed? Our attorney general reads the newspapers to send the FBI after people. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I, I think that by that exchange. The key source for him for the entire memorandum was that letter from a left-wing political organization that the day after that exchange we had, they apologized for. But he sends out a memorandum. And I think this is real important. We brought this up in the hearing. The memorandum goes out accompanying the memorandum, which basically, again, does everything the school board association asked to be done, gets the FBI involved in, in, in monitoring parents at local school board meetings. But accompanying the memorandum on October 4th, was the press release which talked about the National Security Division as part of the task force that was gonna implement what the school board association asked to be done. So when you get the National Security Division, that's, a, that's just, the, the, their focus is domestic terrorism. So this idea that they weren't treating parents as domestic terrorists, it's just baloney. They in fact were. And it, and it looks like this was all coordinated from the get-go, because we now have correspondence between the White House and the School Board Association before the letter was sent on September 29th, and of course, five days later, we got this memorandum that came from the Attorney General. It's sickening what they were doing, but the fact that the Attorney General won't rescind his memo, I find even more troubling, because we've asked him to do that as well. His book is Do What You Said You Would Do. I highly recommend it. Congressman, thanks for giving us a few minutes. I appreciate it. You bet, Jesse. Thank you so much. I, I still can't wrap my mind around that. The attorney general sick the federal law enforcement arm on parents because of a letter the White House helped write and because he read things in the newspapers? Gosh, jeez. All right, we, we have a lot more on mandate madness and the destruction that's coming from that. But 
Let's have a chat. In times that are difficult, like the times we're going into now, it's easy to go back to bad habits. And believe me, I'm talking as much to myself as I am to you. Do you dip? Do you smoke? Or have you and you're still kind of tempted? Get a hold of Jake's Mint Chew. Because there are going to be stressful days. There are going to be days where you say to yourself, you know what, forget it. I'm going to get a can of dip. You know how I know what you say to yourself? Because that's what I say to myself. Jake's Mint Chew is there to help you quit and make sure you stay that way. Go to jakesmintchew.com. It's tobacco-free, and it's nicotine-free, and it's sugar-free, but you still get to put that dip in your lip. Or, my favorite, these are the ones I use, the little CBD pouches, nice and clean, takes the edge off, gets you that fix. jakesmintchew.com. Promo code JESSE gets you 10% off. Don't forget that. jakesmintchew.com. We'll be back. Weather east about uh, seven or eight miles an hour. Good visibility, mostly clear skies, 77 degrees. Thanks for coming out and flying the Southwest Airlines. Welcome aboard. And remember, let's go for it. <laughs> Southwest Airlines pilot, not exactly thrilled about the vaccine mandate. And allow me to give you a little behind the scenes stuff if you're not aware. I get a lot of emails to my show from people in different walks of life. And because my emails are all anonymous, I, I'll never read anyone's name on the air, even the death threats. I don't read the names on the air. So people feel comfortable telling me things. Something you should know about pilots, something I have found out. I mean, I kind of had an idea, but pilots are a different breed. Most commercial airline pilots who are flying your planes are former military guys. Most of them are pretty sharp. Most of them are real independent thinkers. And it takes somebody to be an independent thinker when you think about it. Think about, think about the kind of person it takes to hop in the cockpit of a fighter plane and operate at those speeds with that danger level and one thing goes wrong and you're gone. It just takes a different type of dude to do that. Different type of dude. These pilots are really, really, really upset about this vaccine mandate. And a lot of them are going to walk away. Will it be the majority? No, of course not. But a significant percentage of pilots are going to walk away. The hatred level out there building for Joe Biden as people lose their careers is palpable. And I mean palpable. You tell somebody you're fired, which is essentially what Joe Biden did, you're going to create a level of hatred out there that is white hot. And as you, as we move forward, it's now November, right? It's now November, November, December. Remember, November and December, that's a lot of rhyming. November and December are the months when most of these private companies who are passing out vaccine mandates, that's the deadline days. I see it all over the place. November 8th, November 12th, December 1st. The, 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 these are the two months when the mandate's going to become official. You're about to see ugliness out there. You're about to see ugliness out there. We had over the weekend, once again, American Airlines flights canceled all over the place. Last time I looked, it was a thousand. A thousand. Of course, the system is going to lie to you about that and blame the weather. That is uh, bad weather. And of course, they bring up staffing concerns. Has nothing to do with the mandates. Once again, allow me to elaborate. Remember, these guys are about to get fired. So what are they doing? Well, when you work at a place, you bank vacation days, paid vacation days, paid sick days. The guys are about to get fired. It's unjust. They know it. So flight crews, this isn't just pilots, by the way, it's stewardesses too. They're, <coughs> sorry, boss, got the sniffles today. Call it in sick. Oh, that's weird. Cause we just had a thousand other pilots call in sick today, too. That's what's happening right now. You are about to see a strain on the American economy. It's coming. And, and, and think about this. In New York, 9,000 workers have been placed on unpaid leave, and an additional 12,000 are seeking re uh, religious exemptions. That includes firefighters, cops, sanitation workers. 2,300 firefighters are out today. And I just want to give you another heads up on this whole religious exemptions thing. Some people just said, no, I'm not getting it. 
fired or on an unpaid leave. And this, this applies not just to New York. This is companies across the country. This is what's going on. Some people, some of their companies are offering potential religious exemptions, although not many people are getting them. So some people are putting in for those, which essentially puts your firing on hold while they examine each and every case. What am I saying? Well, they're going to reject most of those cases. The vast majority of those cases are going to be rejected. No, no, no. There's, there's no uh, religious exemption for you. So we're just kicking the can down the road a little bit longer. There's going to be even more pain coming when those religious exemptions get rejected. And let's keep in mind something here. All right. Sanitation. Pretty important. You don't think about it. I don't think about it because why would you think about it? You live in America. You take your trash can on trash day and you haul it out to the end of the driveway and then magically you come home from work that night and it's empty and you bring it back in. Sanitation is a really, really big deal, especially for, what's that word I've heard so many times? Gosh, what is it? It starts with a P, the public health. It's kind of a big deal to make sure trash is hauled away. Sanitation workers being fired, firefighters, they don't do any good out there, right? They're not important. Being fired. Cops being fired. And I brought it up before. I will bring it up again as I wrap this up here. I want everyone to understand. You start firing firefighters. What you're doing is you're saying some people are going to die because they're going to call and that station's going to be shut down or there aren't going to be enough firemen to man the fire trucks and get over there. That's not even talking about the cops. You're going to call... And there's not going to be a cop to send. And people are going to die because of this. That's a fact. All right. We got Peter Navarro (laughs) coming up next. You really want to stay a hold. You really want to stay on for Peter Navarro. He has a lot to say. But first, I know these economic times are uncertain. Is that a nice way to put it? Uncertain. And people are looking to make a little extra money, especially now with inflation going up like it is. Have you thought about flipping houses? Do you know how much money you can make flipping houses? I know you probably watch those TV shows. I do. I know the wife does. You buy a house, tweak a little of this here, improve a little of this, that there, turn around and sell it again at a great profit. It's a great life. But you don't know what you're doing, right? You don't have to. FlippingMadeEasy.com does. If you go to FlippingMadeEasy.com, they put it all in there. All the articles and expert advice you need, it's in there. If you need uh, flipping opportunities, because you don't know what house to buy, right? Flipping opportunities in your area, it's in there. FlippingMadeEasy.com. If you need vendors, I got to get some electrical work done. FlippingMadeEasy.com has that too. It is a one-stop shop so you can start flipping houses and making some cash. Go to FlippingMadeEasy.com. Make sure you put in the code JESSE, gets you an extra discount. FlippingMadeEasy.com. Go become a platinum member. We'll be back with Peter Navarro. All right, it's time to lighten the mood. As everyone knows, yesterday was Halloween. And did you really think there was going to be a day like that that I wasn't going to take advantage of to troll the communists? Oh, I trolled the communists. The wife got involved, too. This was our Halloween costume yesterday. As you can see, we did pretty well, huh? We did real well. Don't forget, the rubber gloves are on. All right, we'll do it again tomorrow.